everyone! Welcome to CJ's Keto Kitchen. As you can tell by my attire, we are going back tonight. Way back. Like back to the 50s. I am inspired by June Cleaver and Donna Reed, and if you don't know who those are, then you should probably Google it. <laughs> but anyway, tonight we are going to be making a mom-inspired classic, and it is going to be meat. And Meatloaf is one of those wonderful things that you can just throw together and it only takes like an hour to cook. So, but this meatloaf is going to be ketogenic. And everyone loves it, my children love it, both my young children and my grown children. You could serve this to anyone and they would not even know that it's ketogenic. So come along with us and let's get cooking. Okay, so I already have my two pounds of meat in the bowl, and I have chosen to use a pound of ground beef, um, and it's 80-20, so it, it has a higher fat content. And then I have also added one pound of ground turkey. Now you're free to use any combinations of meat that you would like equaling two pounds. You can do ground pork, you can put um, lamb, you can have any kind of meat that you and your family enjoys, but it just needs to be two pounds. I like to do part beef because I like the beefy traditional meatloaf taste, but I find that beef on its own can get kind of gristly, especially if you're using a high fat meat, which is good for the ketogenic diet. So the turkey just gives it a little bit more moisture and some smoothness. So to that, we are going to add about a cup of ground pork rinds. And I just put mine in my Ninja, my mini food processor. But um, alternately, you could just put them in a Ziploc baggie and bash them. They just need to be, you know, fine. And it's about a cup. And you can use any kind of pork rinds you want. If you like spicy or whatever you like, it's up to you. Then we are going to have about a third of a cup of chopped red onion. And you can leave this out if you don't care for onion. Or you can use white onion. It's personal preference, but it helps give it some flavor and also a little bit of moisture and texture. going to add about I would say two ounces of tomato sauce so this is four ounces I'm gonna put in half of this we need a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce I'm putting some seasonal seasoning in that's just a mixture of, of different seasonings and some paprika and things like that but you can season it however you wish i'm also going to put in a heavy dosage of garlic powder here i like it garlicky you could use fresh garlic as well but powder works just fine in this recipe also salt and pepper And I'll probably start sneezing here in a minute because I always do whenever I sprinkle pepper in. Then I also am going to put a squirt of spicy brown mustard. I like the flavor, the subtle flavor that mustard gives meatloaf. Then I'm also going to add about two tablespoons of almond flour and I just find that this helps um, give it some Density since we are not having any breadcrumbs or any other binders in here because this is a ketogenic meatloaf So I've got two tablespoons of almond flour here And then we're gonna put our eggs in and I have Whirled mine up once again in my mini food processor, but you don't have to do that. You can just throw them straight in But the secret in my meatloaf this is my family secret my grandmother always used about a tablespoon or two of heavy whipping cream in her meatloaf and so that's our family secret and now you know our family secret but it really does add that little extra bit of something so we have all of our ingredients in there now and of course if you're super delicate and squeamish you can use a spoon to blend this up but traditionally meatloaf is made with clean hands so this is the time to take off your jewelry if you don't want ground meat in your engagement ring like I don't 
Then we want to take clean hands and just start mixing. And we want to mix it up well enough to incorporate everything, but not so heavily mixed that it gets kind of gummy. We don't want that. So, but we do want to mix it fairly well. And I did mix my two meats together before I started adding everything. So, um, just so that I could get the beef and the turkey incorporated very well before I added the other ingredients because there are two different kinds of meat. So I found that it's helpful to get them pre-mixed. But once again, it all depends on what kind of meat that you are using. So we've got it fairly well mixed here. Now our final step is completely optional, but I think that it's highly essential and makes a nice taste difference is we are going to put some cheese in here. The cheese that I have on hand right now is uh, Italian style blend. So it's a mozzarella and cheddar, provolone and asiago, but you're welcome to use whatever kind of cheese you like. And I am going to be putting about a cup, a little more. And just get that all incorporated in. It's gonna give us a nice cheesy flavor and it looks pretty when you cut it too because a lot of times you can see the cheese and it looks very nice with cheddar also and tastes very well with cheddar if you prefer cheddar I'm just using what I had on hand so we've got our meatloaf all combined all the flavors have melded together so now we are going to take our loaf pan And I have pre-greased mine, which is not necessarily essential because this is going to let off quite a bit of grease. In fact, you will probably have to drain out the grease a couple of times while it's cooking. Um, but I did go ahead and grease it with my coconut oil spray. And then we just start loading it in, trying to put it in evenly. And I have put my oven at 375 degrees, and this usually takes about 45 minutes to an hour to cook, depending on your oven, of course. And I have it um, on the middle rack. And underneath my rack, I have placed a long sheet of aluminum foil because this will give off drippings. And because we're taking our loaf all the way up to the top, so we have a nice, nice rounded loaf, you are going to have some spillover of juice and oil grease. So if you don't want to get your oven all greasy and drippings at the bottom, that's what I recommend doing. Okay, we have gotten all of our meat in this here loaf pan. We've got it all pressed in nicely and rounded at the top. So we are gonna put this in the oven for 45 minutes to an hour. And once again, that is at 375. So we'll see you back here when it's all cooked. There's going to be an additional step after we have cooked this meatloaf and it's completely done. We're gonna add some low sugar ketchup to the top and let it cook for about five more minutes. But I will show you that when it's closer to that happening. So we'll see you when it's time for that step. So you can see our meatloaf is almost completely done. It's nice and golden brown and it has shrunk away from the sides. And I also tested it with a knife and it came out clean. So now our last step uh, for the remaining five minutes of our cooking time, I'm going to put a little bit of reduced sugar ketchup on the top to make a glaze. So. And then I take my knife and I kind of spread it around a little bit. 
And then we're gonna put it back in the oven for about five minutes and that will bake onto the top and give us a nice little glaze for the top of our meatloaf. Here's our finished product. Looks delicious and juicy. Gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes and then we'll dig in. Yes, I'm getting ready to taste. What do you have on your plate? Uh, let me finish talking. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I'm getting ready. I'm going to taste the keto meatloaf. <laughs> the keto meatloaf. I serve you so many meals and you lose track, right? Yes. <laughs> and so. Mm, it's really good. You know, you can put this in front of anybody. Carb, carb, carbivore, anybody. Well, they, yeah. They, they wouldn't know it was anything different than a meatloaf. My five and seven year old just ate it and asked yep. for seconds. They didn't right. want the potatoes or anything else that I put on their plate. And my 20 year old and his girlfriend just ate some too. No yep. complaints. And so. this cauliflower mash. Cauliflower mash. If I didn't know what it was, I would think of meat and mashed potatoes. It goes really good with the meatloaf. Yeah, great job. Good job, baby. Thank you. Sure. Thanks for joining us tonight. I hope you enjoyed the meatloaf as much as I enjoyed cooking it and eating it. And hopefully this will become a classic for your children and your grandchildren. And it will be much healthier because it is made ketogenically. If you're new here, welcome. We hope that you will hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell and come back and see us. We upload both recipes and we also have midweek keto conversations and also short vignettes called Keto Quick Cooking. So please come back and see us and I hope you have a good evening and we'll see you next time on CJ's Keto Kitchen. Okay, so what do you have on your plate, Cassius? <laughs> or CJ, I have to call you CJ. Hi CJ, are you getting ready to taste something? So please come back and see us. And uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. So please come back and see us again on CJ's Keto Kitchen and you guys have a good night.